Welcome to The Property Couch, where each week you get to listen to two of Australia's leading property experts. Bryce Holdaway, co-host of Location, Location, Location Australia on Foxtel's Lifestyle Channel, and Ben Kingsley, Chair of Property Investors Council of Australia and the 2014 and 2015 Property Investment Advisors of the Year. All right, folks, you're on The Property Couch, where each week Ben and I bring you the Insider's Guide to Property, Finance and Money Management. Gee, Hello, mate. That was, that was loud. That was big. It mate, was up and about, Bryce. We pushed print. <laughs> we pushed our book <laughs> off to the publisher this morning, mate. So it's like, woohoo! I thought it was the fact that Frio don't isn't giving you any more upsetting. I'm moments. glad you. I'm glad you segued there, mate. Oh, How you? good was Saturday night? <laughs> hey, shout out to Emma. Shout out to Alana who enjoyed this wonderful event with me. Ivis, you weren't there, but you heard about it the next day because you were in town. Where did we go? We went for a little, no, this is all, mate, let's just build this up. We went for a little stroll down to the Star Casino because we're in Sydney. What do we do? We went and saw your beloved pies. Yeah. And then we go into prime NRL territory, mate. So we you did. were getting a bit toey. You were getting a bit <laughs> no, fidgety. No, no. The room's full of Cronulla people that were watching the game. And the Roosters. And then all of a sudden there was this, this um, which is all, normally a really big screen. It's a but sports, it's a sports, sports bar. Area. It was the smaller screen in the big screen area. Yeah. And then all of a sudden your ears pricked up because the guy in, behind the bar says, what, Ben? He goes... Anyone wants to hear the commentary? On uh, the come, AFL, and, come and grab your headphones. Come and grab your headphones. So you're up in a split second, got, bang. Got four sets of headphones for Four everyone. sets of headphones. So we're in prime NRL territory with headphones. Watch, <laughs> and what happens? Collingwood almost won. And then, ba bow. Yes. They didn't get over the line, mate. How good was that? <laughs> so How happy. good was that? You sound so happy for me, doesn't Mate, there was two sense. reasons to be happy. Collingwood lost, and we got the book off to the publisher. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you feel, mate? Are you all right? Well, you know, big game this week. We have a second chance, so, you know. Yeah, I've tipped against you. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Yep. Yeah. GWS, tough component. Spread quickly. Is it component? The ball well. is, is, is opponent? It, is component <laughs> anything component. like a competitor and opponent? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. We've got a bit to get through. You, we do. Any, you, you, any other post-mortem on the Collingham game? Are you happy to leave it at that? No, I'll leave it at that. Okay. We'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens. You know, just a little take, bit of nervousness. Just take, just take it one week at a time. Believe in the boys. Believe in the boys. play your systems. Everyone <laughs> plays their role. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one is um, we were at the Sydney Property Buyer Show. Ben. We were. How Should, was it? It was good. We learned a lot. We heard some horror stories, I tell you. Um... I was sitting down for lunch and, uh, you know, at one of the tables there that they do at those expos and just happened to be sitting next to a guy who sells a bit of vacant land right. um, out wide. So, you know, they specialise in subdivision and selling land. I said, how's it going? He goes, worst conditions in 26 years. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was after the very, very best conditions. He goes, yeah, we had it so good for a good three or four years there and now real problems. Donuts. Donuts. Donuts, they're really struggling. All of the guys are struggling to turn their block. And, and I said, say, what are we talking? We said, you know, some down 10%, 15%. He goes, oh, no. I said, 20%. He goes, most are 20%. And is it any more, worse than that? Some are even worse than that. So that's land values off by 20%. Mm. So that's sort of what happens. But I, I, my favourite one was some apartments that are being built out in the Hills District. Mm. Um, we got some intel in terms of a um, particular buyer bought two of these. Paid six twenty for them, and the bank has valued them at four twenty. Ouch! Mm. So this is that that's apartment a, that's glut. A, that's a third. That's wow. a third. It's a massive drop. Um, mm. So you got to feel for those people. You do. Um, in turn, but that's the classic case of what we always said: when you've got basically 60 percent of the market being sold to investors, someone was going to get burnt. Winter was going to come. Mm-hmm. It has arrived, mm-hmm. and it's arrived in spades. But we'll be talking more about that because we're doing Q and A day. Q and A day today, mate. Veronica um, guests on our couch. Veronica and yes, Dr. Veronica Anderson Morgan were on um, the seven thirty report on this week as oh, well. Were talking they? about property. Okay, it wasn't the most uplifting report, but um, <laughs> it is a. It, you know, it's. Well, we've got some great tips for our listeners, so stay tuned. And the tips are when the tide goes out, mm-hmm. you see who's been swimming naked, mm-hmm. Ben. So if the people yep. have been listening to the principles, I've got to tell you. The most um, the, the 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 most fun I had at the weekend at the property buy show was when people came up to me and they said, "I've bought an investment property. This is totally outside of our business." So they yeah, 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 yeah. I've bought an investment property, and I and I implemented what I learned on the podcast, and they've got a big smile on their face, and they're not worried about um, the change in market sentiment because they know mm. that the property is 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 drenched in foundational principles. Playing the long game. They're playing the long game. Playing the long game. Okay, so uh, thanks to those folks who come up and said g'day. It was a real, tr- it was a real joy and privilege for us to do that, um, and uh, it's one of the reasons we get on a plane and go and do the property buy show, so we can talk to the couches, isn't it, Ben? Yes, it is. It is, and we, uh, lots of news around as well. So we'll get into a bit of the news. 
Firstly, obviously, interest rates. We told everyone they were going up. And if you listen to my monthly uh, interest rate commentary that I release, you would have known that we've been uh, predicting this to happen. NAB obviously bucked the trend, bit of a PR story for them. Um, they're breaking up with the banks again by the sounds of things. But the reality is, is you know, cost of funding have gone up. Um, and so some of those banks have passed those on. That will continue. Um, we suspect, I mean, you know, one of the one of my big uh, people that I admire in this space is Bill Evans, a, a chief economist of Westpac. Um, he's talking about interest, you know, the cash rate not moving until 2021, 22. Mm. So, and that the reason for that is clear. Like we just saw this week, consumer sentiment drop by three points. That's a big drop, right? Obviously, that's around what's happening in Canberra. It's also around higher interest rates. It's also around cost of living. So consumer spending is going to be impacted by that. So there's really going to be no justification to actually raise rates in the short term. There may not even be any justification. We may actually see if, if the banks pass on more of these costs of funds, we may actually see the rate drop. Mm. We may see the cash rate drop. So that doesn't mean that we will be paying less. It might be a little bit, but it won't be a lot. But that's it. You know, this is the challenge we've got. You know, we've, we've had the best of times. Should be interest rates go up then? Well, we've had the best of times, haven't mm. we, in terms of construction-led recovery. Economy's been moving really well. GDP number was excellent. Um, surprised on the upside. But I reckon that's as good as it gets. Mm. I reckon we're, you know, we're in terms of the broader economy. Infrastructure's got to now roll out, so that's going to do a bit of lifting. Um, minerals and resources are picking up a little bit. But I'm not so you know, sure about the broader economy um, over the mid-term. So what's your message to property investors then, Ben? Well, question without notice, but I mean, fundamentals are right, you know, mm. but we, and we want to go into those in terms of we're doing a Q&A day today. There's one particular question where I'll deep dive a bit more into that. But the fundamentals for us haven't changed. I mean, Correct. in terms of what we buy, where we buy, the underlying land value, playing that long game is really important for us. It's very simple. Buy the right property, yeah. correctly finance it, hold it for the long term and buy when your cash flow allows. Hey Ben, so today my Mindset Minute is very, very simple. Um, yes. As you know, my uh, my personal development coach, Jamie, and I were talking about this the other day. Yep. It's worth remembering for that, that for any change to happen, yep. you must be wrong about something. For any change. Let that land. Yep, and until you it. are able to question yourself to find it, yep. nothing will change. True. It turns out that being wrong is essential for growth and change. I think AFL umpires should, <laughs> should really focus in on this because well, I was not expecting you to go there. But why should I be surprised? Hey, that's pretty good, isn't it? That is very good. So it actually gets you to get out of your own way, get your ego out of the way, because yep. it's okay to be wrong. Because yep. you're either I always tell my boys you either yep. win or learn. Yep. So that's an opportunity to either win or learn. So even the AFL administration are not giving the seven day break to both. I think you know. AFL administration, you could, you could learn from this. Gillen listens to this, he'll, he, will, uh, he will do that. So Ben, that's my mindset. Oh, be fun. So, hey Bryce, yes? Money Magazine, yeah, it's, it's out on the shelves. It is, who's in it? Exclusive, 100 suburbs set to boom. Who wrote that article? I don't know. That would have been the location score lads. Straight from the Capital Growth Straight Lab. Straight from the Capital Growth Lab. Mate, does this go so into the Jeremy blatant- Jeremy Shepherd, the Capital this, Growth King. Does this go into the blatant plug category for us? I think it does. Occasionally we do a blatant plug. This is it, isn't it? Well, well get it off the shelves. Actually, we're plugging on the we're shelves. Plugging we're plugging for the money, money magazine. Money, money yes. magazine. Yeah. So thank you to uh, the team there for allowing us to share the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we've got 100 suburbs there that, we, that our algorithm has worked through. Um, it's got a high score on. So obviously, you know, areas predicted for capital growth. Jeremy's being interviewed about that today. I think it's uh, before we'll go to air, Ivis. So yeah, 2GB. 2GB, so, but um, yeah, no, it's drumming up some interest, which is great. Hey, a couple of things. Um, shout out to our gold diggers, Ben. Gold diggers? The gold diggers. We've got some gold diggers, we've got oh. some gold diggers on the couch. Is that a compliment or? So remember Krillis came up to us? And, yes. Um, so he's one of the gold diggers. Yes. Basically, we've asked some <laughs> listeners to dig out the gold. Ah, right, hey, now, now I've Now you're it. keeping yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dig out the gold because what's happening is what we've noticed from a, a few people that have come up to us and have said, okay, um, we've, we've tapped into the podcast sort of, you know, in the last year, yep. less than a year, and it's hard for them to catch up. So what we're trying to do is get wow. a, a catch up guide going on, Ben. So we have got, um, we've got Krillis, we've got Dennis, uh, we've got Robin, we've got Elvis. They're four people who have put their hands up to say Thank we are you. going to mine some gold. But it's a little shout out, Ben. If it's for the long-term listeners yep. who have got some value. Got some notes. Not the new people, just the long-term listeners. Yep. If you want to put your hand up and help us summarize 
the episodes up until definitely up until the first hundred, so that people can benefit who come to the party a bit later. Um, we want to provide a catch-up guide. Sounds so, good to me. So let us know info at thepropertycouch.com.au. And the last one for you, Ben. Well, the, the, there's a big one, right? Obviously, the other big bit of news. There was a couple of other bits of news. I'll quickly cover off on Westpac Banking Corporation. So they were fined. Um, they paid a little fine for Masic, rumoured to be over $35 million for 10,000 breaches. So it was the first test of responsible lending. Okay, so backstory is this. Westpac used the HEM, um, which is a, basically a household expenditure measure, or the Henderson Poverty Index, in terms of how they assessed responsible lending or the ability to give these loans. Um, interesting test case, so it just means well, the wash up of is banks are going to make it harder for you to get money out of them. They're going to do more inquiries around your spending, um, so money smarts is going to be more important than ever. Um, so that was one big story there, so they settled out of court, uh, got that up underway. Now the other big bit of news, and unfortunately this is a little bit political in my view, mm. um, is that we saw the Andrews government. <laughs> Um, passed legislation in Victoria yes. um, around the, the reforms to the Tenancy Act. Well, it leads into our first question. Should we kick that off? We should kick that off. All right. First uh, Q&A day today. This one comes from Chris. Uh, guys, I'm disappointed at your quick video overview regarding proposed rental tenancy changes in Victoria. And of course, he's con um, uh, referring to the, the piece that we did in collaboration with realestate.com.au. Yes. I have no problem with most of the suggested changes, but how can you not be alarmed that tenants being given the right to have pets and make modifications deemed uh, minor, whatever that means. We're not just talking about picture hooks here. After investigating further, this may include security measures and air conditioning. Who pays for these? You flippantly dismiss the pet comment with a remark about tiles. Are you serious? What about carpets and polished floorboards taking a pounding from pets' claws and their excrement? I'll tell you from experience that any sort of steam cleaning and fumigating of carpets, etc., even at the tenant's expense, is not the answer. I've had to on at least two occasions where both urine and facial matter were so prevalent I had no choice but to change the carpets. Forget the floorboards, too damn expensive to resand and polish. Please tell me that these above mentioned points are also concerns for you. They are big concerns. I mean, the fact that the whole lot of the, the reforms uh, got through Parliament surprised me a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why I'm talking about this being political because this is the Labor playing against the Greens to try and win votes in the upcoming election, right? So that's that's the agenda item here. That's why they were rushed through Parliament. Um, they haven't been thought through properly. Um, we got massive concerns with them. Ultimately, the owner of the property is now no longer in control of their own asset, um, and that does not make sense in a you know in a in a society that we live in today. So, uh, what are we saying? Was reform needed? Were there some tweaks? Getting the balance right? Yes. Has it gone too far in favour of the tenants being in control of the property? Unfortunately, it has. So that is why it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, if you live in Melbourne and you are um, so someone who has an investment property in Melbourne, we want you to come along to an event that we're running. So PICA, the Property Investors Council of Australia, is running an event with a guest speaker, uh, Yvonne Martin, who has over 20 years experience in property investment. She is going to outline to us some of the legislative changes which will come into effect from July 2020 or earlier uh, once the, the laws are, are updated to, uh, to accommodate these extraordinary changes. So um, this is really serious. You know, we're, we're in a situation where unfortunately um, we're going to see rents uh, increase. We may even see some people exit uh, as landlords in the property space. So, why are they going to increase? Well, two things. One, exactly what Chris was just highlighting there about the cost of maintaining the properties if pets are coming in. Um, there's so many other areas where it's going to be increased costs for the landlord. Those landlord, it will pass that on to the tenants. So those tenants who think, well, I'm now got, you know, I've now got a home that I can now live in indefinitely, um, it's not going to be the case and you're going to be paying a privilege for that in terms of high costs for, for rent or renters coming into those properties. So Yvonne is going to step us through um, all of the changes and what we as, uh, as owners of those properties should be doing in preparation for this. So examples would be, and you might be thinking this is really weird, but we may actually see the norm going to 15 to 18 months in terms of lease agreements because the way in which they've structured it, um, you, it's very hard now to get a, a poor tenant not, not a bad tenant, but even a poor tenant out of a property. So there's lots of different things we may have to change in terms of how we're dealing with our property managers and the recommendations that our property manager is going to change. Now, here's the deal, Bryce. There's only 60 seats. 
Okay, so we're at Magic Lawyers offices. We've got a great room that we're going to be, but there's only 60 spots. So if you're really keen to understand well, more about this, keen, yeah. everyone should be going, um, but it will sell out. So make sure that if you're keen to get along to that, we'll have the link. Uh, go to Eventbrite. Um, if you search Eventbrite, pick a Victoria Changes to Residential Tenancy Act, you'll find it, or the show notes will have be, the link. Be in the show notes. I always say press the, um, the photo for show notes, Ivis, but it's been updated. You just scroll down now. In the old days, it was pressed. Yeah, photo. I tried to do that. Couldn't work. Um, okay. So, but it's in, in the show notes. So, hey, Chris, um, we are taking it very seriously. Very seriously, Chris. And, hey, Chris. And, so, just for that too, if you're not a member of PICA, right? That's who. This is the sort of these are the sort of lobbying that we do, so that your five dollars goes towards us putting these events together, educating you on what your rights and responsibilities are, and making sure that you have a voice. That is the whole thing. We need, it's a donation, guys, to, to allow us to do the work that we do to protect the assets. So run by property investors for property investors. So even if you're interstate, these types of changes may come your way if it's a tight election uh, because of you know, the pressure that we're seeing between the Greens and Labor. So that's something that we just need to understand. So please, Please, if now is not, the, if you haven't already become a member of Pickup, please do so. Please do so, Ben. And it's not about being a supporting either side of politics either, because you've been no. out, outspoken about Labor's changes. But if, if Liberal was as equally outspoken about similar changes, you'd be putting the heat on them as well. Oh, totally. I mean, you know, some of the stuff that the Andrews government's around infrastructure and a few other changes, bring them on. Yeah. You know, I'm interested in in what they have to say. So. I, I'm, yeah, I'm apolitical, you yep. know, and the association is absolutely apolitical, but this is the type of politics that gets played to keep in power. Now, Chris, just a quick uh, thing about that, uh, that video overview. The, the idea with doing the collaboration with realestate.com is to not go too heavy on commentary and opinion. It's just a, an awareness piece, number one. So we're recording this on the 13th, what is today, Ben? It's the 13th yep. of September. We recorded that particular video Four months ago. Oh yeah, four or five like, months ago. It was yep. like days after the the mood to change um, came yeah. out. So, so Chris, please don't interpret that as being flippant about these changes. It was um, it was all it was quite a while ago that we actually filmed and, that. So, and the reality is, we didn't think they'd get up. Mm. Like we thought they were extraordinary in terms of what they are, and and now you know this is what the politicians in those communities where renters want more power are now going to have a you know a way to to grab votes. That's all that's happening there. Great question. Thank you, Chris. Um, uh, make sure you attend that picker event. Um, and Ben, I reckon, uh, I reckon I might reach out to um, Vaughn or perhaps you, see if we can, uh, we can get her on at some yeah, stage in the future as I well. I think that's a great idea. All right. Okay. Here's our next question from Emma. Hi, my name's Emma. I have a two-bedroom, two-bathroom, one-car spot uh, investment apartment in Maribyrnong. And I've just noticed on my new rate statement that the capital improved value and the site value have decreased. Um, it is a long-term investment, so should I be worried or should I just enjoy the lower rates for this year? Thanks. So Emma, good, good question there. Um, so uh, the fact that it has decreased is not ideal. The fact it's long-term, if um, that's what you're doing, is a good thing. And I also think that just as a general rule, um, those older school flats, I think, might be going into a period of growth given that there's been affordability challenges and that the fact that houses and uh, townhouses have gone up so much. So I think there will be a pivot into that style of flats, but in areas that aren't oversupplied. And the, the challenge is uh, Maribyrnong, Ben, as you know, has, yep. uh, has mm -hmm. a fair bit of supply coming there. So if you've got an older style uh, flat down along the river there, uh, next to the, the pub. That, yeah. that pub that's on yeah. the corner there, Ben, as yeah. you go over the bridge. Yeah. yeah, just the pub that's on the, that little block there, like that, that's, that's landlocked, right? Mm. There's not much that's gonna go on and there's not a lot of, uh, you know, medium or high density gonna go. However, when we move up more towards High Point, and all of those old factories and all of that mm. over the back there, there is a big oversupply challenge there. So Emma, this is where the challenge lives, right? Um, you may be concerned and you've got every right to be concerned because the reason why your value has gone down, and this is for everyone's benefit right across every state and territory, there is a valuer general in every state and territory, and they are the chief valuer of properties, lands across uh, Victoria and all other states and territories. They set prices for every suburb and municipality. So the actual councils don't set their own uh, rates values. So what happens here is if your land value is going down, which is what's happening in Emma's case, your rates notice goes down. That's not good, okay, for a lot of reasons. One is because councils, they have spending problems as well, just like every other government level. 
they have this problem to try and buy to provide more and more and more and their community wants more and more and more and so they rely on those rates charges to basically provide those services so when we see things like and this is a classic case of a block of dirt and a large block of dirt it might even be an acre of a block of dirt has been turned into a hundred apartments the, the the use of that land in terms of one one hundredth of that is definitely gone down right mm. and when you've got more and more and more of these things being built the, the value of general has got you know they, their job is try to be independent right and so they're saying definitely the land value has gone down because it's an oversupply and they are looking at at recent sales history they're not just saying well the land value hasn't gone down they're saying because there's a glut of this type of accommodation now in play in that area I have no option but to do that because there will be a lot of people who will contest the valuations of their rate notices so he's got a job to do or she's got a job to do so this is the challenge when we see these types of things happening so for me there really is a story here Emma around um, what block you're in what's going to be happening within sort of a kilometer or two kilometers of where you are because even though you're talking about a long-term investment we have got examples of uh, people buying apartments in 2007 saying they've got a long-term view and those apartments are still worth less than what they paid for them back in 2007. So this is where we really drill home the message of um, you know, owner-occupier appeal and the supply story because you won't, you might be paying interest for the next you know, 10 or 15 years and get no return at all, Emma. So that's dangerous for you. So I think you'd want to get that particular property investigated around whether it's worth holding on to or whether you want to sell it. Yeah, because she doesn't say what the apartment is, does no, she, Ben? She doesn't no. say if it's a flat in the old school definition or an apartment meaning Well, new. when you say two bedroom, two bathroom, the old ones don't have two yeah. bathrooms, right? Yeah. So that's a giveaway for me that she is in a medium or high density of block. And so, M, I would be, sorry, Emma, I would be um, concerned. Um, really concerned. I've got a mate, uh, Ben, you know him, Matt, he runs a business over in uh, Richmond. He rings me the other day and he says, um, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit confused, can you help me out here? Because it's similar to mm -hmm. this one. Um, We've got a client who does have a textbook flat in Richmond, yep. right? Perfect textbook flat. Um, and he goes, but it hasn't performed over the last eight years. Yep. I said, yeah, the challenge is because, have a look around Richmond. You know, there's, there's, there's weapons of mass construction everywhere. There's, yep. there's apartments going up all over the suburb and they are a victim mm. of having a, a, a good asset in a good location that is actually oversupplied. So part of the equation here is, as you said, because if you are in that, because I was my my sort of immediate image yeah. was going to that spot down that you were Maribyrnong, talking about, yeah, and on the river there. Um, yep. But I, you know, I, I, I do take on board the, the the fact that it is going towards our high point where it's starting to get well oversupplied. Mm. But so you can actually have, you know, so that's why there, there's a bit of a science to this because you can actually we say a location is 80% of the heavy lifting. Um, but it can actually all get undone if you buy the wrong asset. Yeah. Even if you bought the right asset in the right suburb, yep. that's oversupplied. Yeah, I mean, look, one of the things uh, could be a challenge, uh, well, in, in the Richmond case, I suspect if that property uh, was to be put on the market, there would be competition on it. Mm. Uh, whereas some of the others, there's not necessarily as much competition. So that would surprise more likely on the upside than the downside. I mean, we, oh, know, I think so because I said he goes, should I sell it? And I said, well, yeah. here's the challenge: you're going to pay. Uh, you've mm. paid money to get in. You've got to pay money to get out. Yep. And for that price point, where are you going to go? You're going to go much further out. Yep. So people still want to be in Richmond. Um, so I, I'm with you. If you tested it at sale rather than just comparing it with other two bedrooms in the yep. area, you might find it performs a little bit better. But it's it's interesting um, that you can get a lot of this right and get one thing wrong. Yeah. And um, it undoes it all. And the risk of, on all these types of things is the future supply. Mm. Right, so, so even in Richmond, at some point, we're going to get a bit of a saturation point where that they can't put more on. And so then there will be capital growth in that area. But when you've got areas like Maribyrnong and those types of areas um, to the side of Maribyrnong there where there's a lot of factories that are being rezoned for, um, for other uses such as residential, you've got a lot of dirt there that's going to be rezoned mm -hmm. and that could mean more and more apartments. Now, that's great news for the for the for the um, people have the, the, their shops in in High Point. Yeah, you know that's more foot traffic. That's livability is still pretty strong, but I still I still struggle with you know that Maribyrnong back area there because it's all tram, right? There's no train that runs out there, so the speed to get into the city you've got to go down mm. Maribyrnong Road. That doesn't function on a week. It's you know horrible most days. There's only a couple of bridge crossings, so from that point of view, it's it's problematic. 
It's good news for people who want to get a roof over their head at a lower price yep. and supply, but it's yep. not good news for people who already own something. So uh, good question there, Emma. Hopefully that's helped you. Sorry um, to be a bearer of bad news for you. Lucas, thank you for your question. Here it is. Hi, Ben and Bryce. Uh, this is Lucas Brandy here. I've been listening to your podcast and I love the information I've been getting. Great stuff. I want to ask you about a future possibility that the U.S., as we all know, runs huge deficits and Trump's now starting trade wars with a whole bunch of economic blocks and the interest rates is going up. So it's going to be harder for them to service their debt and the deficits are going to become bigger in case that backfires and creates another GFC kind of situation. And how do you think this is going to affect the Australian house market? And also, we'll probably have another compounding problem with the harder lending criteria and people having less opportunity to roll interest-only loans with the banks. So I'd like to know what you think could happen to the property market if those situations end up happening, which is the worst case scenario. Thank you. Lucas, so let's start with the big, broad, uh, global question around um, debt, um, sovereign debts and and governments being able to basically pay their debts. You're right, there is a risk, and I'm no expert in terms of monetary markets, but there there is a risk with what you're saying. On the flip side of that is that what the Trump administration is trying to do um, is get their economy booming, and it is going very, very well. The lower corporate tax rates um, is obviously attracting uh, American companies to reinvest back in America and give jobs in America. Those jobs, those people pay taxes. The, the profits now flow back into America and then the government gets those revenue and tax receipts. So we may absolutely be talking about um, you know, their debt uh, spiralling further, but effectively governments earn their revenue through uh, tax receipts. So if these companies and workers are reinvesting and starting more opportunities in America, what they're banking on is a flood of new new taxes in terms of profit taxes, company taxes, and also wage taxes to flow into the system to also look after the debt. The other thing that they did, and again, I'm not an expert on this, but in terms of the bonds and the asset bonds that they released to the bigger banks, those banks now, um, so the government still owns the asset, right? So they didn't basically do off balance sheet lending. They were doing balance sheet lending against their assets is my understanding of it, which means that what underpins that borrowing is an asset that sits behind it. And so, you know, ultimately, if the likes of the Merrill Lynch's and the big banks um, around the the US, um, they are going to obviously have to pay that money back as well. So I'm I'm saying that you've got a, there's a, there's a question around risk. I get it. Um, and, and you should never underestimate that particular risk in terms of the contagion effect of what it would do for a broader uh, GFC Mark II. Always a risk. Okay, so let's bring it back to what you and I can control. Now, what we can control is a flight to quality. And anyone who's listening to this podcast will have heard us over the journey talking about what we see as quality in the property market. Now that quality in the property market we are referring to is the land closer to the central business districts. So if you were to go and do research whereby you did get the value of general's underlying land value of each suburb across any state or territory, you will see a pattern that emerges. And that is that the increase in those rates, notice that land value occurs from the center and moves out. Okay, so the flight to quality for us will always be, and this is why we've never gone into mining towns, we've never advised people to to be speculative around property. The flight to quality is about getting recession-proof locations, and that is usually, you know, that, that sort of initially three to five kilometers or, you know, one to five kilometers from the central business district is blue chip country. We all can't afford to buy there, so then we move out to that second tier but it's underpinned by the ability to actually afford in those locations. And there will always be that flight to quality. As our population continues to grow, there will be people who will choose to move closer into the city for status, for uh, economic activity, for, for convenience, and for all of those things. So there will always be pent up demand in our view 
from quality locations closer to the city. So I don't listen to the noise. We don't buy in new estate areas. We don't buy house and land packages out wide because we know that what underpins the value and the, the long-term capital growth is the scarcity of the land and the accommodation that sits on that from an owner-occupier appeal point of view. So if you get that right, you can, you can, you can basically you know, uh, sail through these storms or these, these changes in momentum and sentiment in the market. And that has always been our fundamental belief. So, and it works in all the capital cities, probably our top 20 uh, regions across Australia, that still works. There are still areas which have high desirability, high status, um, great accommodation, uh, where people wanna live over time. And that's why we cherry pick those locations and we don't fall for the mass marketing, mass volume, um, you know, new estate, new infrastructure being spent out in those areas because it doesn't pay off for the long term when the market starts to correct. They're the areas that we feel do the worst in the long term. Very well said, mate. I think the, um, the, what's interesting here for people to remember is whenever you hear headlines, try not to get generalised because it, you know what, what this is saying is the whole market's going to drop, the whole market's going to crash. No, like what you said, Ben, if you're going to a quality location, let's role play. Let's just say if all that happened and it did affect someone in the suburbs that you're talking about, the, the comfort you get is, okay, that person's affected and it's changed their life. It could be a job, it could be an offshore business. They fall out, but two people are willing, two mm. or more people are willing to take their place versus if you're in some of the, the um, you've said flight to quality, if, it's, if you're not a quality asset, if someone falls over there, quite often it's crickets. There's no one mm. willing to take their place, which then becomes, as you could say, a contagion effect. So yep. it's important to understand that go granular when you're thinking about the assets that you hold. Because in this country, if you, if you rewind back to what Mark McCrindle said about this, you know, someone wanted to design the most ideal place to live in the world. And all, I think it was um, Edward de Bono, I think he quoted, didn't it? And then he goes, oh, but you don't have to create it because it's Australia. So number one, we've, we're a destination place. Two, we're getting more people moving here than moving out. Uh, we've got low interest rates and we've got unemployment that's in check, right? So all of the major sort of concerning points are in check. now. Of course, we're not immune. They always say if America sneezes, Australia catches a cold. Yep. So we, we are not saying that we are risk-free, but bring it back down to whenever you get fearful of some of this generalized commentary, rewind and listen to what you just said again, listen to that two or three times. And remember, is your house vulnerable? Is your investment property vulnerable by applying all of the principles that we've talked about for 189 episodes? If it is, get towy. Mm. If, if, you're, if you're the house you live in or the investment properties that you own, satisfy all the criteria we've talked about for 189 episodes. Just have a normal, healthy level of respect for risk, but otherwise just get on with it. If you had $500,000 to spend, Bryce, mm -hmm. and I could tell you that you could buy in any area of Melbourne, where would you buy? As close as I possibly could. Yep, say so Middle Park, Albert mm -hmm. Park or something mm -hmm. along those lines, maybe yep. Richmond, you know, it's that closer in Kensington, Flemington. Mm -hmm. right. And that is the vast majority of what people would do. Mm -hmm. And if you put that into your own city, same sort of thing, where would you buy eastern suburbs, beach suburbs in Sydney, whatever that looks like. The reality is, is like we say, well, you can't do that. It's impossible. No, that's right. Because the demand fit affects the price point. So it's impossible. Same with London, right? It's impossible to get into those markets at those price points because there is so many people wanting to get into that. Now, let's say hypothetically Armageddon happens and you could get into those markets for 500. God forbid what the property prices are gonna be out wide. Oh, you yeah. could probably buy the houses out wide for On under $50,000, yeah. right? So, so that is the message here in terms of, we'll always have a flight to quality. And like you said brilliantly earlier, when do you, when do you get into the market? When you can afford it. So this is the time where you can see opportunity. This is the time where you can cherry pick and negotiate harder to get into those markets. And, We've got a lot of clever clients. I mean, they are doing that now. They're seeing this as an opportune time to look at their numbers and get into the market. Our business is growing yeah. when everyone else is being fearful. And that's a sign of the astute investor who's seeing opportunity in the market. Like it. So if you think about the people in Sydney who have just experienced the best boom-like conditions for a while, mm. go rewind 15 years when, the, when it was the same, when the conditions were what we're doing now, those people that went and cherry-picked all the very best properties don't have to work now because of what Sydney just went through. So yeah. you see it now into the future. At some point it'll turn if you're getting the best assets, 
you're off to quality. So great question, Lucas. Well, thank you, Lucas. That's a great question. I wish I could, you know, get my crystal ball out and see what's going to happen to debts around the world, but I'm pretty confident on the good quality stuff. Now, I also, uh, the other caveat, the top 10, 15% of the, the yeah. best suburbs are the highest price points, the three, the five, the seven millions. You don't buy them for investment, yeah. right? Unless you're worth 20 or 30 mil, right? Well, we always say investment grade, Ben, is there's a price point that's investment grade because yeah. Turak is an investment grade suburb in theory, yeah. but no one would be able to stay solvent to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a price point yeah. where it makes sense. I mean, sense. look, the, the, the mega wealthy do buy those. So, mm. like, if a $9 million. Because they can dollar, stay solvent. Correct. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A $9 million property is now worth $5 million. They're astute. Yeah. If, you know, if there was a collapse in the total, but they would buy as many as they could get because they're, they're right. They've got millions of dollars in the bank that's going to keep them solvent. So uh, very good, Lucas. Okay, the last one is a written in question, Ben. Yep. Uh, this is from Nick on History of Sales. I'm a casual listener of the podcast and a first time buyer looking for a place to live in Melbourne. We have found a townhouse in Thornbury, mm -hmm. uh, for those outside of Melbourne, on the north side. Yep, northern um, suburbs. That ticks all the boxes for us and looks like a good price. Just for the record, it's an investment grade suburb. However, the property is selling for only a fraction of that for which it was purchased in 2014, Ben, four years ago. Okay, something's wrong there. And his market's about 50 there it is. other similar townhouses. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> um, the property next door is also for sale. <laughs> Drop it again. <laughs> it is probably the best located, nicest property we can afford that we have found in Melbourne, but those seem like red flags from an investment point of view. Mm -hmm. I thought I might just ask and see if you might be able to point us in the right direction, Ben as to how much we should read into previous sale prices and also about what saturation means in the townhouse market. Thank you and keep up the rad podcast. Oh, rad. Nick. Well, Nick, you've answered your own question there, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty... The, the, well, the one thing, thank you for sharing this question. Because Absolutely. This is a brilliant question that everyone needs to understand in terms of this is Lego land. All right, so you've gone right suburb, um, just wrong selection of asset. Okay, so even townhouses can be oversupplied. That's why location doesn't do 100% of the heavy lifting, Ben, it only does 80% of the heavy lifting. So you get the right location, but this particular thing is all of these townhouses are going to be the same inside. There's no personality no scarcity. to them. No scarcity to them. There's no owner-occupier appeal where people are coming in and saying, I'm going to make this mine. Okay, so... A one of three, a one of four, one of five, you sort of still got a bit of scarcity independence around that. You're buying for the area. One of 50? One of 50? <laughs> I mean, come on, one of 50. Like, that's nuts. Yeah. So that's where you get that problem. And look, you know, there's areas in, in um, Kensington, you know, Kensington Muse areas where there's a bit of that stuff as well, where you just get this Lego land mass produced sort of stuff. Bit of pockets of Ascot Vale have a bit of sort of commonality to them. Think about well. it logically, Ben. You're turning up to an auction, right? And it's one of three townhouses. Yep. And, you, and you're getting nervous. You're talking to your partner. You're getting sweaty palms. And you're thinking, this is in our price point. It's in a mm. great suburb. I can walk to everything I want. If I miss this one, I'm going to be devastated because there's only one of three and they don't come up very mm. often. Versus you're standing at the front of the same townhouse development and there's one of 50 and one next door. There's actually... There's no reason to push the price. And in fact, you go, oh, if I miss that, I'll get the next one. Or if I miss that one, I'll get the next one. So you just, just think yep. logically. Don't yep. try and come from the 30,000 foot mm -hmm. view and drop down to street level and just visualize what would happen on auction day if that was the case. And that's, that's effectively what we're talking about here. Correct. I, can, I, can, I understand Nick's conundrum, right? That is that his money can get him closer in and buy something like, and so it's like, so I, I need to ask this question to the guys because it's like, I, you know, my money buys me something closer in. It's, it's. I've got land, so it's everything that it says. But it's like you've you've picked it on the one thing, and that is no scarcity, uh, no owner occupier appeal. So you are only going to get moderate growth of the area, as opposed to that outperform growth that you would get if you were two streets away and it was one of two. Uh, but the reality is, he know Nick knows that, and his wife would know that that he's going to have to pay a premium for that asset because it's got scarcity. Correct, so here's that. So from an investment point of view, that's what we've talked about. Yep. From, from an owner-occupier point of view, if that's all you can afford, yep. and you wanna live in that suburb, and you go in with your eyes wide open, because it still means yep. that you don't have to commute an extra three suburbs on your budget if you go further out, yep. that's a different kettle of fish, Ben. Yes, that's that's an emotional, practical yep. discussion. You wanna walk down, get your eggs benedict, and have all of the community and the wine bars and all that stuff that Northcote are now starting to develop, and the gentrification that's going on that area? 
Well, then that's a different story. You will get growth, but it won't be as good as the growth you would get if you had an independent townhouse that had its own character and appeal. Hey, pick, pick we have 70s children. We always talk about Eggs Benedict. You know the new, <laughs> no, the new people talk about smashed avocado. We yeah, always well. forget that. We always Eggs Benedict. <laughs> so there you go, Nick. Um, very good question. So thank you very much to Chris, to Emma, to Lucas, and to Nick for their wonderful questions. And of course, we hope that that's uh, served the broader tribe, Ben, the broader community in general, hearing from those as well. All right, my life hack today is from Peter. Peter. So this is a uh, the People's Podcast today, Ben. So Peter sent one, sent one in and said, one of my life hacks is for you, for your own little property maintenance handyman work. Keep a few wood slash bamboo skewers, in brackets, the souvlaki sticks, in your kitchen drawer or toolbox. When screws get loose, and keep spinning without biting, you simply, one, remove the screw, Ben. Two, insert the skewer as deep as you can into the hole. Three, snap the skewer off flush with the hole. Ooh. Four, put the screw back in and it will grab nice and tight again like new. Great for door hinges, etc. What a great tip, Ben. That is a very, very good tip. Thank you very, very much for that one. That was from Peter Ivish. Thanks, Thanks, Pete. Just so you know, Peter, Ivish walked over from her central producing station <laughs> just to come and get a bit closer to that one, so she liked that. Would okay, you... Ben, so before we go to your did you know, yeah. it's important yep. that we are going to give our podcast listeners yes. two things. One, first bite at the cherry. First bite of the cherry. So we have we've got a wait list. We do for the book. We do. So the people who are on the wait list, Ben, they're going to get two things. As soon as the books hit our desk, yes, they will go straight in the mail to them. So they will be the first to receive, and that's number one. So before they hit the shelves. Yep. Before yep. they hit the shelves. So yep. get on that wait list now. Ivis has put that up. So if that's you, we would love to get this book in your hands. And two, Ben, we're going to give them a discount. Terrific. And. and you're about to decide how much. Question without notice. Here we go, folks. How much are we going to give them? Mate, you're, right, so you're, a, you're a generous so man, I'll, so I'll, it's, here's your chance. So this is for people who are on the wait list. Only. Only on the wait list. Yes. Okay, so they've got a special code. Yes. And this special code is going no, to be... No, they'll them. only know the code by being on the wait list. That's man. right. So they'll get, they'll get the code sent to them. Yes. So this is on the run, on the fly. Here we go. <laughs> 30%. 30 percent. 30 percent. 30 percent. Oh my goodness! If you get on that wait list, now you are a generous man. Now our normal <laughs> discount is only 20 percent. So, you, so for those people who want the extra 10 percent, get on the wait get list. Get on the wait list. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, "There's was a little like, bit more work." Where's for me? the logistics of this? <laughs> so, so that's it. So 30 percent off I like if it. you're on the wait list because it's going to hit the stores yep. first week of October. Yep. But if you want the book before it hits, because we've gone to press today, yes. Um, so you'll have that book hopefully in the course of the next 10 to 14 days. Oh, oh uh, let me think that through. No, 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 no. Ben. no, no. Oh, okay. You will have it first, Ben. Let's just stay with that. You will be first. <laughs> It'll be it days takes, before it takes anyone two else. Weeks to print it. I didn't think that really. <laughs> let's just say, folks, if you're on the wait list, you will be the first. <laughs> We're wholly organised here. Mate, let's just say you're a generous man with a 30%. 30%. And we'll, we'll work out the logistics. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so tell your friends. We're going to post it on Facebook, Ben. Um, that and if they why join 30%, the Ross? Because we are on a crusade. Yes. Right? We are on a crusade that this is about money management. You cannot. You cannot create financial peace. You cannot create wealthier tomorrows until you actually master money management. I want everyone you... to get this book so they have not a what to do book, but a how to do. The ingredients are in this book. This is why I like the name the most, right? Make money simple again, because inside the book shows you the making. Yeah. Shows you the, the making of money. The how to, not the, the what to. The how to, the how to. So please have a look at it. Now, Ben, just so everyone knows, that's that. There's very little money to be made in books, yeah. and giving the thirty percent discount <laughs> means we make nothing. It's when you said there's no margins in books, there's none. You know, there's very little margin in books, Bryce. There's very little margin, so we don't care about the margin. Yeah. This is about getting it in as many hands. Crusade. We want to help as many Australians change their money habits, get in control of their money, and basically create financial peace. Now, here's a little shout out to people. Who, um, who have downloaded the Money Smart system. Mm. You haven't got the whole system. That's the Money Smarts banking system. Bit. Yep, correct. If you want to do the full system, that is why, if, even if you have the Money Smart system already in your hot little hands, is why you want to delve a little deeper. Well, put it this way, it's 240 odd pages. So, and the fact sheet, 
that we sent out was five or six. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's got all the tips and tricks in terms of how you put it all together. We've spent, I mean, you know, we've got, we've got thousands of people are using it and we've been able to bring most of that information and content. The vast majority of it is in this book. Seven steps, Ben, to making money simple again. Check that out. Waitlist, um, jump on it. We'll give you that discount. Very generous of you, Ben. Well done. Um, did you know? Did you know? So a couple more from my little you know, weird and wonderful facts around real estate. So in several major cities like London, Toronto, New York, and elsewhere around the world, there are entire buildings and developments that exist solely for the purpose of hiding vent shafts, utility, cell phone towers, railways, or simply to give the illusion of occupation. So you know when you've got underground roads that are cutting through big cities? Yeah. Rather than have the pollution stack, they basically put a building around it. So it doesn't look like, you know, oh. so it doesn't look ugly in, in terms of the, the, the skyline. Yeah. So yeah, so that happens in a lot of these cities. Obviously, same thing, all of these cell towers, rather than having on the top, they basically build a building around it. So well, it I've seen a cell tower. If you're driving from Southport, across the Southport Bridge towards um, Surface Paradise, I think, it's, I think it's on that street up on the left, there's a palm tree and at the top, um, it's just a, it's just a, it's an artificial palm tree with a mobile phone tower. There you go. So yeah. they're trying to beautify the city. So yes. that happens. There's a little did you know? Hey, you know Monica's apartment from the Friends TV show. Oh, sure. Yep, yep. I do. Everyone knows. I mean, yep. that was our era, right? So we sort of know <laughs> the Friends. What do you reckon it's worth? Um, I reckon it's worth. Um, a lot of money, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you saw my piece of paper, man. You're about to drop three point five mil. So that might be US as well. So that's obviously pretty pretty important in terms of estimated to be worth around 3.5 If I was going to guess, I must admit I did see the number, yeah. I probably would have guessed higher. Oh, really? Yeah. Just, just, but it's only a small apartment. Yeah, but you know, well, like... 3.5 mil? People, small... people pay, overpay for Elvis's place because he was living there, you know? Yeah, well, so, that, well that's the overs yeah. because it might only be a one or a two bedroom. Did they, did they slam the doors on one bedroom or two bedroom? I'm trying to remember in terms of on the set. Mate, I've got to honestly tell you, I reckon I watched three Friends episodes in my entire life oh, and four Seinfelds. And that second that one, I'm more embarrassed about. about him, <laughs> that explains a lot that about Brian. I'm, I'm more embarrassed about the Seinfeld one. I should bloody watch oh, mate, reruns. Look, look, you know, I've only ever watched three of your TV shows. so that's You probably have what... not watched. You've been in the room when they've been playing, but <laughs> no, you haven't I'll watched. watched one of them. I promise you I did. Mark Which Zuckerberg, one? Which one? Bryce. Which one was it? Where was um, I? The the um, the one in. Um, I'll let him go. Obviously. Let's give him some rope. Yeah, uh, Maroubra. The one in Maroubra. I've never the, been the in young, Maroubra. The young lady in Maroubra who oh. was shopping around. You did go to Maroubra. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and you were sitting in the pub having a beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. It was a gluten free beer. <laughs> <laughs> See, I did. I watched. All and right. I'll, I'll be watching the new show. Don't worry about that. I'll be right. watching the new show once. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Yes. Purchased four houses next door to his home in Palo Alto and leased them back to the families that live there. He did this to avoid people marketing their property as you can buy the house next to Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Very clever. Yes. Good on him, hey? So well, because he does live in suburbia. I don't know whether you've seen the. Yeah, you know, there's a and there's a lot documentary on. He's Netflix. got a lot of time to think about these things too, hasn't he? <laughs> well, he's got a bit of money, but he, look, he does. Is that why you own the neighbours' pro properties to your house? I do not know <laughs> uh, any of that sort of stuff. I'm a nobody. Yeah. Rightio. Yeah. So there you go. There's your three. Did, Did you, you know? know? I like it for this week. I, I like it when you come with stuff like that. Little, little like, interesting facts. Normally you come in here and you yeah. go. If, ever, if everyone, if all our listeners, oh no, like I haven't got a. Did you know? I'm like. <laughs> Mate, we only, one thing we, we we only do. do this every week. <laughs> so, like, you can forget it. There you go, folks. All right, folks. See you again. Q&A day. We love it. Hopefully that has been of benefit to you. Ben has been generous. 30% discount. 30%. Until next week, Ben. Knowledge is empowering, but only if you buy the book. Uh, only if you act on it. <laughs> see you next week. See you.